Hey there, we are going to be going over some formal logic today. Uh, this is going to be in a format called a line proof. Um, this is just a very, very formal way of kind of taking some premises, uh, or premises and then finding a conclusion. These are going to rely heavily on uh, rules of inference and I'm going to put a link to the Wikipedia article on rules of inference because it's actually a really, really good article. Um, and I'm going to be using several of those rules uh, in this proof. All right. So we just have some variables here. And basically, we've got P or Q. So we know one has to be true. P implies R. Q implies R. And our conclusion is R. So we want to get from here to here. So for starters, let's make a line number. And we are going to say, well, we know P or Q is true. So we're going to do something called an assumption. Uh, you may have made these in everyday life, but <laughs> we're going to do it mathematically now. Uh, and when you do a, a, uh, an assumption, you have to enter what's called a subproof. And those look like this. So we're going to start off, since it's closest to the left, we're going to assume P. And we're going to make a little line. And then we're going to say assume. And then we want to say why we're assuming this. So we're going to say assume for case. Um, and I'm going to actually do an abbreviation here because I don't feel like writing out the whole thing. This is called case analysis. You could also just say cases. That would be totally acceptable as far as I know. Um, but that is our first line of our proof. Now we're going to continue this subproof. This is kind of our notation for the fact that we're in a subproof. Um, and we're going to say P or Q. We assume P. So we're trying to conclude R. You always really want to keep this in mind. Like we are trying to get here. I'm going to put that in red so we know just how important that is. This is our desired outcome. Everything we do in this whole proof is just going to be to prove that this is true after our careful, mathematical, meticulous uh, analysis. So this one's actually a pretty easy statement. Um, we've got all the tools we need right here. So P implies R. We know P is true. Therefore, we know R is true. And this is called modus ponens. Um, you can also say arrow. I think this is elimination. Um, basically the same thing. Uh, I prefer modus ponens. It's just more commonly used. And this is one of those rules of inference you're going to find on the Wikipedia article. So P implies R. We know P is true, so we know R is true. Or we, we've assumed that P is true, so we know that R is true. Uh, so we're going to say modus ponens, and then we're going to give our line numbers, and that would be line 2 and 4, because here is where we say P implies R, here is where we say P is true. So now we're going to go ahead and exit our subproof, and we are going to say uh, we're going to say uh, that we are going to assume Q. So let's go ahead and assume Q. And again, we're going to do an assumption. For case analysis, you know, seven. Uh, and again, Q implies R. So we're going to do R. This is modus ponens once again. This is actually a really, really common rule to uh, to have come up. Um, it's a it's a great one to kind of know the ins and outs of. And um, again, we're gonna do those line numbers. So this will be three and six. And then down here, we can say R by case analysis and then we'll give lines 4 through 7 and oh, I don't want a comma here there. here we go 4 through 7 
and this kind of box denotes that we're done. So uh, there may be some different approaches to this um, that are maybe a little bit more detailed potentially, but this is this is more than more than good. So we have our premises. P or Q, P implies R, Q implies R. Then we have our conclusion we want to get to, which is R. And so as we come through here, we're saying, well, uh, we know P or Q has to be true, so we're going to assume for cases. And if you have a, an or statement and then a bunch of um, uh, what are we, conditional statements, I guess, or Im er, implications uh, based on these or statements, you think you, you want to kind of probably gravitate towards a case analysis because you're going to say, well, P has to be true or Q has to be true. Um, you're not going to have a case where neither is true. So you can assume P, you can assume Q, and in either case, we get R by modus ponens. Um, so this is a valid conclusion based on our given information, and we proved it by case analysis. All right, thanks for watching.